So, what is a CNFT? CNFTs are non-fungible tokens on the Cardano blockchain, and essentially, they're just some data that gets stored there. And that data, crucially, can contain anything as long as it's within the size limits. They're unique, immutable, which means they can't be edited, and they're native assets, which means they're supported instinctively by the programming language that Cardano has written in, which is really good, it makes them just like any other token on that blockchain. You might be thinking then, well, hang on a minute, non-fungible, what even is fungible? Well, in a sense, you know how that dollar you've got is worth the same as any other dollar, right? And in fact, you might even say it's specifically considered to be identical to any other dollar. There's no real concept of which Bitcoin or which dollar you have. A dollar is a dollar, a Bitcoin is a Bitcoin, an ADA is an ADA and so on. That's fungible, interchangeable, considered the same value and considered essentially the same. Non-fungible is the opposite. So this is a specific case of unique and identifiable. So they're not equal in value and it matters which one you have. Here's an example project. We've got Ada Ninjas Series 2. You can see here, this is the policy ID for it. And you can see that that is a unique policy ID. And every asset, as we're gonna look at here, has its own asset ID within it. So the policy ID is what tells you about a collection of tokens. And the asset ID is a specific, unique, non-fungible token within that collection. You can see here we've got some metadata with it just to show you. He's in the laboratory. This lady's in the burnt forest. She's got the spike katana. He's got the knuckle katana and so on. Some common misconceptions. The art that we just looked at there is not stored on the blockchain. It's actually just the pointer to the art, which is usually stored on the blockchain. And that's because of the size limits I talked about before. In this case, it's that the art itself is being stored on IPFS, which is another uh, storage facility on the internet. And in doing so, put what's put in that metadata is that link to the art. And as that metadata can never change, that metadata for that NFT will always point to this art, which also can't be changed either. So in effect, you have a fixed bit of data on the blockchain, which can't be forged or edited ever, and that points to a real asset. So you get the security whilst ensuring that the blockchain remains lightweight. The second misconception is often people think once an asset is minted, um, it can be edited. That is not the case. Once minted, and the process of minting means literally put it in on the blockchain, they can never be edited ever at all. The only change you can make is that they could be moved to a different wallet, traded, but the underlying asset itself cannot be changed at all. They are immutable. At the moment, the main use case for these is art, as you've seen, but actually, if we zoom out a little bit, what these are are the base level infrastructure you need to prove who owns what, all right? So that could be tickets in the future, physical assets, your driver's license may eventually become an NFT, anything important that we wanna track that's not just money, because that's kind of already been solved by what Bitcoin did originally, right? And now we've got even more powerful third generation blockchains like Cardano, which enhance that further. So we solved currency, essentially. Now we're solving every other asset. So what is a CNFT? It's an NFT on Cardano. Each collection of tokens has their own policy ID. And then within that, an individual token has its own unique ID. The token itself is just some data on the blockchain with a pointer to uh, some storage called IPFS, which stores the actual file. And the rest of the metadata is usually used to tell you a bit about the asset. That's essentially what they are. Thanks for watching. Leave any questions in the comments. Thank you very much.